What is up, Story of the Fight listeners? Will, what's going on, man? Not too much. You know, special episode on a Wednesday. Special Recording on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. Salam, Pendega, as they say in Malay, for all of our Malaysian listeners. Did I nail it? Was it good? I don't think you nailed it, man. It's all right. You know what? But we're trying. All right. So, we're trying. That's what matters. The reason that. Shout out Malaysia. Yeah, shout out Malaysia and all our Malaysian uh, listeners. Pendinga. Again, I think I, I think I nailed it. I'm pretty sure. A lot of Pendinga. But, I think that's what it is. I, I think Salam Pendinga. But Let you know see. what? Somebody will correct us. Somebody yeah, will correct I'm us. I'm sure either they way, will. <laughs> a for effort. Either way, A for effort. But uh, Friday Fights 25. We've talked about this kid before. You know, usually we say this kid, this kid, that, this kid, that, and we're talking about grown ass men. They're going into rings and cages and fighting. Well, well, that's the weird thing. Normally, like Dana White will always be like, "Yeah, this kid's tough," and it's like forty year old Stepe, and you're like, "Come on, Dana." <laughs> and, and like, I never say that. He's because, a firefighter, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I, I never really say that because, like, I don't feel. I mean, I'm 27, right? So, like, I don't feel like I have the right to call anybody <laughs> in combat sports kid. Except for this guy. This is the one guy. Johan, Johan yeah. Gasali, right? Yeah. Goes up against Samurai. And so we've talked about Johan before. 16-year-old kid. Yeah. Literally has a video on his Instagram talking about the fact that he's like, hey, well, I still go to school. Like, I'm in high school. I'm 16 years old. And, you know, my, my training gets really serious two weeks before a fight. But my teachers understand that I, I fight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just crazy. like, what are we – when I was 16, dude, I was flipping burgers, man. Like, I was trying to make a couple bucks, of, like, for weekend party money, you know? I can't even say what I was doing when I was 16. But it definitely wasn't <laughs> waking up at 4 in the morning to train, go to school, get out of school, train more every day. That's, that's the nuts. discipline. That's obsession, yeah. man. That's what they call yeah. obsession. Mm-hmm. To be 16 years old, have that amount of discipline, wake up at 4 in the morning, train, go to school, get out, train some more. That, I don't know, man. That's just next level. It boggles the mind. Like, I, I'm just in yeah, awe and then, of Johan Ghazali. And, and then on top of that, you have him fighting now on the one Lumpini shows, the Friday fights. And he made his debut, I think, in February of this year. And he's now 3-0 and this year with two finishes, two knockouts. This was his first fight going to decision against Samurai. It's insane. It's like most fighters don't fight three times a year. And most of them definitely don't fight three times when they're 16 that's crazy you worried at all about like i'm not dude uh, honestly i'm not i think he's fine i think he'll be fine you think he'll i mean be he's fine? winning dude he does he does but he's also just 16 you know what i mean like all right so let's talk about this fight look yeah if, if they continue if they continue matching them up correctly mm-hmm. they have a star yeah they really just have to do play this right because cause now they're doing, uh, with the one Lumpini shows, they're kind of like, it's almost like if you fight well enough on here, we're going to give you a contract to be on a fight night card. at Like a one one uh, contract, like a big one contract. And maybe not yet for Ghazali. No. You know what I mean? Maybe not or, yet. Or, or maybe you do, but again, you just continue making sure that you match yeah. up with the right people. Yeah, maybe. I, I just don't know. to a larger audience. Yeah, so, so in this fight, and we'll show footage here in a second um, because one is, is sick and they, they let us, but what's kind of impressed me in his, his first two fights is that he's just a dog, right? Like he's just walking people down and he's swinging these big shots. He's putting people out. His first fight was like a 16-second knockout or something like that. Second fight, he got a three, uh, a round three knockout. Um, but it's really he's just a tank. He's running through people. He's just swinging big shots at them. And I was like, that's great and all, but like – like you said, as you kind of grow in the sport, like there needs to be more than just that. You can't always do yep. that because what happens when it comes back the other way? How do you react to that? Like we, we got to see more. And in this fight, he did not get the finish, but I learned more about him in this fight than I have in any other uh, the past two fights. I haven't seen anything before that. I think he's got like 50 fights or something like that already. But um, I know. But so I have some footage to show. Um, okay. so this is Ghazali on the left, uh, right here. And this is Sam right here. Um, and if you see the first round was a very textbook Ghazali round, right? Pressure, 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 uh, big, big shots, 
over and that? over again. Big right hand, overhand Big right, hands. right, over overhand and over right. again. One, two, or one overhand, like just big shots, giving you a ton of pressure, back up against the ropes the whole time, and just swinging leather at you, right? This is the very beginning of the fight. That's how he opens it right there. So these are the punches that he's landing. It's mostly punches at the beginning, and then he starts throwing the outside leg kick. Whoa, look at the timing on that, huh? Uh, Perfect. So that was the big thing, the outside leg kick and the big punches. Left hook to the the body. body Yeah, the the big left hook, the reaching left hook like that to the left, uh, to to the liver. And then the overhand right like that, and then leg kicks. That was a, a those were his weapons in the first round. I mean, look at this dude swinging. This dude's sixteen years old, and he's nice. just just not giving him any space. Just swinging big shots at him. And I was like, okay, cool. This is what we've seen Ghazali do. There's the outside leg kick again. There's the left hook to the body again. Um, he mixes it up well, right? It's not just spamming one attack, one attack, one attack. But this has kind of been his arsenal in his one career so far is these big shots left hook of the body overhand, right outside leg kick. That's kind of what he does the most. Right. And that's the end of the round where he has him in the corner and props to Samurai. I mean, Samurai is trying to get his kicking game going to just keep him off of him. And Ghazali's just, just smothering too him. much pressure, man. Here we go. Look at the right yeah. overhand, right? Just power shot after power shot. Man. <laughs> yeah. And you can see him like screaming with punches too. Like as he's throwing him, just putting everything into the punch. Yeah, there's a few times, too, where uh, Samurai is kind of like backing up, backing up, dancing around a little bit, just kind of trying to avoid some of these large shots. And you see Gazali yeah. put his hands down and like, he's like, come, come on. on, you know, yeah. like, yeah, like, let's trade. Meet uh, me in the middle. Again, <laughs> you, you see this this kid and he's 16 years old and he's in there. Oh, he got left hook to the right outside leg kick. Beautiful. You know, something else that Gazali started doing later on in the third that I thought was really nice is, uh, he'd come in with the shoulder and dip his head down and kind of like mm-hmm. bury it into Samurai's chest. Yeah. And he started sneaking the right uppercut as he was backing oh, up. Believe me, we're going to talk about that. Oh, <laughs> let's do it. So let's do so, it. So that was round one, right? It was um, big overhand right, left hooks to the body, outside leg kicks. And it's like he wants to he wants to smash you. He wants to keep coming forward and break you and, and you're back against the ropes. You're in retreat the whole time. Meanwhile, Samurai is trying to get some distance to start landing his kicks. And it's yeah. like, okay, um, what adjustments are Samurai, is Samurai going to make uh, for the second round? So they, he opens the second round. A minute in, he throws this leg kick again. And Samurai checks it. And it's like, ah, Samurai picked up on that outside leg kick. Mm. That might not be as much of a weapon here moving forward uh, if he continues to check those. Um, what Samurai can do is if someone's pressuring you like that constantly – you and and you can't get your punches off. You can't get your kicks off because he's too close. The elbows, yeah. right? That's like the ticket. So you see here, uh, they're they're trading a little bit, and right there, see Samurai in this clinch position as he's backing up. He just gets enough space for that elbow, and, sh- and there it is, sneaks it in, steps the elbow in, right? And then Ghazali's like, oh, "Are we elbowing?" And pretty much after this, the in- his entire offense in the second round was just nasty step and elbows. There's another, there's one right there. I mean, so it's one of those, uh, everything you could do, I could do better. Basically. He's like, Oh, are we in elbow range? And look at him waving them on. Yeah. He's like, come on, man. <laughs> he's a character, man. So he just loves to fight. Yeah. There, there was a few times where you just see him going all out, uh, being extremely aggressive. Hands would be down. Uh, there yeah. was a certain part where uh, Samurai throws a head kick, and I'm telling you, man, he missed by maybe an just, inch. Just barely out. Yeah, of yeah. just missed. And uh, even the announcers were like, "Did he get him? Like, I no, I think yeah. he just missed him because it was that close." <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Either that, or he ate the shot and just it didn't even phase him, but he he missed him right. Yeah. Uh, and so those are the only things that I saw. That I'm like, man, you see the youth and you see the uh, the immaturity sometimes. A little bit, yeah. In in, uh, in the fight, you know, uh, as he's going on. And, you know, yeah. a part of it, I'm sure, too, is just experience. But you said the dude has over 50 fights. Something like that. It's like 45, 50 fights or something like that. But look at this darting elbow coming in. Nice. Come on, dude. Yeah, and that's wa- really good. And literally, this is – there's another elbow. And there's another one. And he takes another a step one. back and he waves him on. <laughs> Touches him, gets the outside leg kick. Another elbow. Another one. And he's like, oh, you got me with that one. <laughs> and so he throws another one and another elbow. And he steps in with another one. 
and a spinning back elbow and another step in elbow. And that's the wow. one. And it, that's just the rest that's of the round. Cut them open, right? That's just the rest of the round. Just elbows over and yeah. over again. That one cuts them open. So, yeah, it's like, okay, first round, man, I got to worry about these overhand rights and these leg kicks. Second round, it's like, where are these elbows coming from? He's just stabbing me in the face with elbows, basically, for the entire second round. Uh, and, and so I was like, that's a good – that's a good thing, right? I'm seeing more now from Ghazali. I see uh, uh, he made a read uh, that he can step in with these elbows because he hardly threw maybe one uh, for the whole first round. And then the entire second round, he's just stepping in with those elbows. Um, here's the spinning back elbow. It doesn't really land. Kind of lands but... on, it it kind of like raises the top of the head. Yeah. And so third round here, it's like, all right, the pace that he's fighting at is insane. Like, can he keep that up? And uh, probably, right? Because he's only 16 years old. So he's got like a ton of energy. But can he keep that up? Because it's been a dogfight, kind of. He's just been like a ton of volume. And it's not pitter-patter, vo- pitter-patter volume, right? It's like heavy shots that he's throwing. It's like, yeah. does he gas ever? Let's see what he looks like in the third round here. And so he opens the first round with a nice flurry where he starts actually combination punching more than he did uh, at any point in the fight. And I was like, dang. For him to come out into the third and start putting together three, four, five punch combos, that's that's crazy. And then he makes the read for the uppercut. Yeah. And then once he made that read for the uppercut, it was like, who needs elbows? I don't need the overhand right. I don't need the leg kick. I don't need the elbows anymore. This this uppercut's found the mark. I don't think he's going to adapt to it. And he just threw uppercuts for like the entire third round. And like you said, he does a good job where he'll dip his shoulder in, right? Like uh, Mayweather used to dip his shoulder yeah. in and then back, take a step back, throw the uppercut. There's the uppercut to the overhand. There's another uppercut. He wanted it there, right? There he gets it. There's another, <laughs> another one. Yeah. That's the big shoulder in with the uppercut. Yeah. And so the thing we, we talked oh, God, about – you know, some of the immaturity and coming in, lowering hands and just getting uber aggressive, maybe wanting mm-hmm. to put on a good show. I don't know. But at the same time, as the fight progresses and you see some of these adjustments cool. being made, and in some cases, in the middle of the round, you know. Yeah, uh, w- yeah which, he didn't walk out, start uppercutting in the first, like in the first exchange of the third round, right? Like he found it in the third round. Yeah. You know? uh, so th- there's some things also that's very impressive that shows like on the opposite end of the spectrum – some of the maturity in him being wise beyond his years uh, or uh, years yeah. within the fight game, right? And so uh, it's like, which one are we going to get? Either way, it makes for an exciting style. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the way his head snaps back right here from this up. Also, look at his face right here as he's getting ready to throw this uppercut. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like so he's... much intensity in there. He just snaps the Boom. head back. Oh, man. It moves off to the side a little bit. Yeah, look there's that. the uppercut to overhand. But everything, everything punches and bunches, uh, bunches, right? For the most Just part, yeah. Like a lot of combos. Look at that. That's a three-punch yeah. combo right there. In the third and round, too. It, it got to a point, though, and I feel like from what I've seen uh, with opponents going against Johan uh, Ghazali is that there's a certain point where they realize, like, I'm getting beat up by a 16-year-old. And you <laughs> see like... them start fighting not to lose instead yeah. of fighting to win. And I felt like Samurai was a little hesitant after he started seeing Ghazali coming in with these giant bombs. He actually gets caught with one uh, by his tempo, and you see him kind of start slowing down a little bit. He starts yeah. recuperating a little bit again on the first round. But ever since then, I felt like he was super hesitant. Yeah, and then and then on the flip side, is you see the other way, where it's like, I'm done getting tagged by this kid. I'm going to try to like overwhelm him. And then you see like his last fight against Ty, where like in the third round, he's like, he starts taunting him back and he's like, I'll throw leather with you, dude. And then he gets, and then he gets knocked out. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Man, what do you do? Right. And then the coolest part is he's 16 years old and he's beating these grown men. And you're like, you'd probably be cocky, right? You'd probably have an excuse. This is the end of the fight. Come on. Yeah. dude. Just loves the fight. A lot game. of respect. A lot of respect, man. Yeah. <sighs> well, Malaysia, you have yourself a good one. You got yourself like it, one right? over there absolutely man so uh considering you said this was his third fight this year third fight this year uh i think he did february and then may and then this last one uh just last week so 
He's got time for another one. At least two. at this at this pace, he could fight twice again. And he's yeah, getting bonuses, so it's like, why not, right? <laughs> 16 years old, just a couple hundred grand in the year, you know, off of uh, bonuses. That's not bad. Well, it's it's uh, on the Friday fights, it's, it's 10K, but still, oh, it's still hey. a decent amount of money over there. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Nothing to sneeze at. But yeah, I think, <laughs> uh, I, I think he's uh, definitely somebody to watch for. And I know like a lot of people in at least the MMA community, like in America, they kind of like, they see like these long Thai names, right? Especially on these Lumpini shows where they look at the card and they're like, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know any of these fighters. I don't know these mm. names are so long. I don't even know how to pronounce them. All these people, uh, you see that. And, and then you see that now they, they take, they're taking off the, uh, the gym names, right? Like it's just going to be super like, it's just samurai. They're not, they're not having that, that big, long last name on the card anymore because they know Westerners are not really like it's, it's for some reason it scares them, right? They're like, I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't want to watch it. And, yeah. uh, so people aren't really tuning into these as, as much as they should, in my opinion. Um, and, these are the types of guys that like when you do tune in and you see this guy, you're like, Oh, that's someone to watch out for. And then the next time he comes around, you're like, I remember that guy. Like these are the type of guys who are going to get these shows noticed and more familiarized with kind of like what's been happening with me. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Westerner. Aren't we all right? Me and you both. (laughs) But, but like, those are the kind of guys that are on these shows that are, that will do that. You know, like how many times did I, did I tell you like, dude, you got to watch these. I know you guys, I know you don't know the names. You don't know these fighters, but like, but you, you just watch a couple, like they're going to make a statement and you're going to be like, yeah, exactly what they will. And this is one of those guys. Most people should be hyped to see his next fight for sure. And the best part is all his previous fights with, for, with one are just on YouTube. They're just free on YouTube. Just, just go watch them. Just yeah. search Johan Ghazali. Easy peasy. And then after that, go to Story the Fight, hit subscribe, hit and the notification bell. watch our recap bell. of his fight. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there we go, man. Uh, do you have anything else on the kid, Johan Gazzal? No, no. Just, I mean, good luck. I hope he keeps uh, keeps winning because he's very fun to watch. Yep. I agree. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for watching <laughs> this clip of Story the Fight covering Johan Ghazali. Shout out Malaysia. Uh, I already forgot how to say listeners that that didn't take too long, but yes, <laughs> thank you everybody. But like the fighters, time. they will it will begin to stick, you know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Pendengar, Pendengar. There's that's what it is. It's long pending. Maybe I don't know. All right, I'm like that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks <laughs> for like, another clip. <laughs> Story of the fight. <laughs>